Hello guys and guides and welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you what I record with. Um, this is a newer video. I made a video on what I record with about a year ago and that was using a program called DX Story. Um, since then I have actually moved to a different recording program uh, called Marillus Action and um, I just want to make an updated tutorial for you guys um, to show you the program that I actually record with now. Um, so as you can see I am actually using the program to record my screen now. Um, it's really cool that you're able to have the program open while recording. Um, not really anything uh, practical but I think it's a really nice feature especially for something like this. Um, so first off, you're going to notice that uh, the recording is very, very smooth. If I move my mouse around here, um, it's it's just it's really smooth. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I like it. Um, it just has a miracle way with um, getting your FPS just perfect. Um, I've had really no problems with FPS lag in game. Um, I actually noticed an increase in FPS while recording and um, it's just a lot better than DX Story in my experience. Of course, um, you know, this might not be true for you, but for me at least, it is so much better than DX Story, and um, it's probably due to the codecs that the program uses in uh, opposition to DX Story, but uh, let's not get into all that. Right now, I'll just show you all my settings and some of the features that I thought were useful about this um, program. So, as you can see here, this is the main dialog that'll come up. Um, up here, you can actually select to where you want to record to. I have it selected to my recording hard drive and then my new recordings folder. And as you can see, it's actually putting this recording in there as we speak. Um, we've been going for one minute and 50 seconds. And um, over here, you can select whether you want it, uh, you want the uh, program to lock into games and just automatically uh, recognize games and um, capture those when you press the hotkey or you can actually have a desktop mode which I'm using right now and also you can just select a region on your screen for uh, recording. So all three of those are pretty much the major three that you're going to want to do and Merlis Action has all three of them so that's kind of awesome. Over here you can select your file format, I have it set to AVI. You can go to MP4 but I've, uh, as I've noticed it's a little bit laggier because it's, uh, it's compressing in real time. So. I usually stick with AVI. Video size original, so that means whatever size my game is or whatever size my monitor is, it will record that size. If I selected something like 1080p from this drop down, it would record only in 1080p even if my video wasn't in 1080p. Um, that could result in letterboxing or cropping of the screen, so I just go with original. Um, video frame rate, I actually do 60 um, just because I can. Uh, probably more practical to do 30 because even after you upload it, um, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be cut down to 30 by YouTube, so um, it would just be overkill at that point. But um, I like 60 for some reason. I guess I could do some really cool slow mo shots if I really wanted to. Not really practical. I should probably change that to 30 when I'm done with this recording. But anyways, uh, duration you can actually set a custom custom duration um for your uh clip and then it'll either stop there or it will uh, cr start creating a new clip um use perfect uh, video match mode that's if you're like recording like uh like actual videos from your screen like if you're recording like windows media player um that will perfectly match those things um and then you could also do record system sounds um that just makes sure that uh your in-game sound and your skype sounds are recorded Anything, pretty much anything you hear out of your headphones or your speakers will be recorded. And then allow multi-channel audio recording. Um, that's basically to make sure that your system sound and your microphone get split so you can edit them both um, afterwards. And I go over this in detail in my um, audio editing tutorial. So um, this, this program supports multiple audio channels, so that's really great for my other tutorial if you guys are coming from that. Um, so up here next is our live category. Now, um, you can actually stream live to twitch.tv and um, other places like YouTube and a few other live streaming places. Um, it's really cool because I'll get to this later, but you actually have an, um, the uh, the feature to actually record your face cam live with your footage, which is what I do. And uh, I, from my experience, the Marilla Selection live stream feature is just, um, it, it gets my award for simplicity um, because you don't have to go through a, another program like uh, Open Broadcaster Software or XSplit. Of course, if you're going to be dedicated streaming, I would recommend those programs instead of this, but it's still nice to see that Marillis has incorporated this feature into their program. 
So all that's really cool. Here are all, all my settings if you really want to know, but uh, yeah, yeah, I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, it does like it doesn't compress the videos, so it's probably not going to come out the best unless you um, select MP4 in the first tab there, uh, because uh, trying to upload big files in live time is just not going to work out. So make sure you select MP4 if you're going to do this, because the file size can get pretty big and your stream can get pretty laggy. Um, also, you can do audio recording with this program. So uh, say you didn't want to record your your screen or your video game and you just run, wanted to record your voice, um, you could actually do it right here inside of uh, Marilla's Action. So that's kind of handy. Um, if you're into that sort of thing, like post commentary, you could actually just record your voice and then overlay it onto your um, video uh, later in uh, editing software. So that's pretty nice. Up next is benchmarking. This will basically um, this will basically monitor the frame frame rate you're getting in a game and it will composite your minimum frame rate, your maximum frame rate, and your average frame rate and a few other things. I haven't really experimented too much with this, but it uh, should work solidly from what I can tell from this program. So up next, you have screenshots, pretty much standard what you would expect. Anywhere you see the little FPS icon to record your screen, um, you can also capture a screenshot through a setup hotkey, which we're going to go to settings and look at. Um, later. So you can either record your entire desktop or you can record your uh, first to second monitor and you can select your um, format. So pretty simple settings. Up next is settings. We have a whole bunch of tabs in here. So this is where all the cool stuff comes in. Um, general settings right here, application um, always on top. That's just personal preference. Basically means that it can't be hidden behind another program. Uh, check for updates. That's basically if you want to check for updates every time it starts up. I usually leave that off because it uh, usually, I don't know, I just like to use as little of my CPU as possible and just checking for updates every time um, just seems like a waste of resources in my eyes. Um, start application, minimize to tray. That means it won't pop up this window every time you start it. It'll just go down here into the taskbar. Um, and hide action window on uh, desktop recording start. So if I would have that selected, um, whenever I hit record, when I'm recording my actual desktop and not a game, it would hide this and uh, I'd have to go click it and open it, but I turn that off because obviously I'm going to want to record this because that's what the video is about. Um, enable action remote control. There's a really cool Android app, and I think they're making an iOS app soon that you can actually press a button on your phone and it'll start recording your screen. So that's it's kind of cool. Not going to lie, although I just stick to the regular key on my keyboard to start the recording because uh, I have an iPod and stuff like that, so don't really have an Android phone that's compatible with that, so it's interesting nonetheless. Um, I think it works with Bluetooth, not sure though, never tried it. All right, here, here are the video recording settings. Um, video quality is on high. These are all my settings, um, may work great for you, maybe not. Um, the bitrate for MP4, so if you have MP4 selected in your first tab here, um, you can actually select the bitrate. I would suggest uh, dropping this down a little bit if you're going to mp4 that'll reduce the lag and you can find a good uh, quality to speed ratio here i would not su suggest 100 percent because that's pretty much just overkill and you probably won't see a difference until we start dipping down to like maybe the 60s not sure i never fiddled around with it so feel free to experiment um input range not really sure what this does i'm guessing 16 to 3 uh to 2 3 5 is going to give you a, a brighter gamma um, and then 0 to 255 is probably going to give you like a, a darker brightness. I'm not sure, but that's my best guess as to what that is. Um, I'm sure uh, either you can look it up or actually try it out for yourself. Um, I might want to do that after I'm done recording. Um, use multi-core recording. Um, I definitely have this checked because I have eight cores on my processor. So I darn, wetter, I darn better be using those other seven cores for whatever. So I have that selected. If you have like a dual core or quad core, it probably won't make too much of a difference. Um, record mouse cursor. If I did not have this selected, you would not be able to see where I'm pointing with my cursor. And then visualize mouse clicks. That basically makes like a ripple effect wherever I click. So I'm doing it right now. You'll probably see it. And then uh, overlay graphics. You can actually like overlay like um, a picture in your recording. So uh, what this is useful for is if you watch my videos, I have like a little thing covering my face cam. Um, I could do this, although I prefer to do it in uh, post-production in my editing program, but you can actually select this and do it all real time. So that is actually really nifty and you can put like a whole bunch of like um, 
cool stuff on your screen like if you can open up a photoshop file and like put in pictures and stuff you can just click that and then find your picture and it'll plop it right on top of your recording so that's really cool and i haven't really seen any other program do that in real time so that's just awesome that it has that functionality um, up next is your webcam so if you actually want to record a face cam with your videos um, and you don't want to have the you don't want to have the fuss of trying to line it up with your footage in an editing program or any of that this is like the best um, this is uh, this is what I do although I'm not recording my face cam right now all this obviously would be kind of pointless on a tutorial video not really reacting to much but um, you can actually click here to always record or even uh, record on button down which is kind of interesting and you can select your uh, your webcam here and then you can actually select which uh, which side of the screen it'll, it'll appear on mine is on the top left although I could go to top right bottom right bottom left and uh, you can also um, choose how big you want your face cam to be I have mine set on 13 although I think that's a little bit small I kind of leave it at that anyways um, don't want to take up too much of the screen with my face cam but I, I thought that was like a really cool feature that you can change the size as well and then you can also select a second webcam which is awesome like not only do you have the function to do one but you have the function to do two and that's kind of legit and then you can actually change your aspect ratio of your face cam right here just to lock it on to something I have mine set to 4x3 because I don't want it to be like widescreen I want it to be like a square and then um, you can go ahead and uh, see yourself so there's my face and that's just to show you if it's working you can actually test your lighting and like your frame rate um here so i kind of do that every time i'm going to record just so i can center myself in the screen and make sure i'm not like off to one side when i'm recording and uh that's pretty much all that is that's actually a really nice feature and i'm glad they thought of that um up next is your audio settings you're going to want to go ahead and select your microphone um if you want to learn how to make your mic sound better in real time and then use it as a microphone and uh, you can go check out that tutorial it should be in the description along with my tutorial on post audio editing but uh, here i have my virtual microphone selected which is being edited currently as we speak and uh, being made sound awesome so if you want to check that out check my other tutorial um you can select the volume of your mic so if you want your volume to be raised down you can do that and then bring it up uh, record your microphone to a separate audio track you want to have this checked if you want to be able to split your voice and your in-game sound later so you can like change the volumes independently um record system sounds uh usually just leave the system de default unless you have any other reason to move it and then you can uh, select the balance right now i have my system sounds a little bit lower than my microphone and then your bitrate, I would suggest leaving, leave, leaving this at system default, otherwise your audio might get um, out of sync with your video. Um, so over here we have your heads up display, this is basically a little FPS counter that also show, shows if you're recording or not. It should be overlaid on your screen or inside your game, and it'll basically tell your, your FPS and like how long you've been recording, if you're recording, and then that all that good stuff. Um, you can choose to hide it during your desktop recording. As you can see, you can't see it right now. If I were to uncheck this, you'd see it in my recording. And that says, do not record HUD in games and applications. Um, if you don't want your FPS counter to show up, you click that. And then you can hide it on Action Startup. So I currently have mine selected here. What's kind of cool, and I haven't seen this in other programs, is that you can actually lock it to the middle, which is kind of cool. I actually might want to um, keep in mind I actually might want to do that, it sounds, um, I don't know, like right here, eh, never knew that. Alright, so, up next, export settings, um, you can actually upload directly to YouTube, which is kind of cool. Um, you can also select to use your um, graphics card to accelerate your um, video rendering, because you can edit, you can render your videos directly in here, you can't really edit them, but you can compress them and make them smaller uh, right in here, um, which is kind of cool, I don't use that because it degrades up the quality a little bit and I'm super OCD about that and then you can also upload directly to YouTube which is kind of awesome uh, record video I have this set to f19 um, all the way on the right side of my keyboard I have f19 instead of all the way up to f12 I kind of have those extra keys there so I'm using all of them for special functions with my recording thing uh, record audio 
I have that set to F18. That's kind of also on that side of my keyboard. And then you can just kind of go through these. Uh, they're pretty self-explanatory. I don't think I have to go over all of them. And there's actually like a second page. It's kind of hidden. <laughs> if you click that little arrow, and uh, you can actually delete your recording. Um, like if it didn't come out well and you don't want to just like hit stop recording and then go in here and delete it manually you can actually just cancel it and it won't save it which is pretty cool you can also add a bookmark in in your recording which is kind of awesome <laughs> just saying that's that's kind of awesome so you can like go back to that bookmark say you got like an epic kill you want to bookmark it it'll make it easier to find in your video later uh, webcam you can actually toggle this during your recording so um, f4 if I click that while I'm recording it'll turn on and off my webcam and uh, just a whole bunch of awesome really cool stuff you can actually pause your recording um, and not uh, create a separate file which I don't to be honest I don't really use that much I'm actually learning a lot by looking at these hotkeys um, about features I didn't even know about so it's really really cool and then you can change your HUD position in real time without having to open up this program um, just really really cool features that they have implemented in hotkeys which I really like I'm a big hotkey fan myself um, so that's pretty much it I think I did the full rundown um, if you are looking for a recording program not sure what to choose this is what I vouch for it is um, it is the best out of all that I've tried I've tried Bandicam Fraps DX Story a whole bunch of other ones I've tried recording with open broadcaster software and out of all those um, this is the one that I really like and I really prefer and the one that I've stuck with for almost over a year now so I really <laughs> I really can't do the software enough praising when I uh, when I make a video so um, go and check it out for yourself there's a trial on their website I think it's like $35 or something on their website as well um, so I would highly consider this program um, just because it's so awesome and um, it is paid so if you're looking for a free option open broadcaster software is another good alternative although if you have the money if you have the spare change or if you want to save up for something um, this is the one that I would totally totally recommend um, so I think that's been a 17 minute tutorial I think I shouldn't drag it on any longer but I really uh, really hope this like taught you guys something and even if you have Marilla's action you're just watching this to see my settings I hope that kind of helped you out in your um, in your knowledge base of this software so um yeah that's pretty much it hopefully you learned something and um thank you guys for watching i'll see you next tuesday with another tutorial thanks and um i'll see you guys later peace out